morning. We've been cleaning out the sheds and I've got a heap of grain that needs to go out to the lambs. I'm feeding the little lambs in here and then I've got to give grain to the lambs on the rake. We had a load of lambs go Tuesday and they killed out really poorly, which indicates that the rape wasn't doing enough for them. So we need to give them grain as well. So let's do that. Also, I would like to correct another statement I made. I made, I said that roughly a 50 kilo sheep will cut, kill out to about 25 Closer to 22. All right, let's feed out some grain. Let's talk about some grain safety. Lupins, you can feed these out to all sheep as is. Just pour them on the ground as thick as you want. These, these have been crushed. You can feed these out to a moderate amount um, it is the food that sheep need to get used to because they can get grain poisoning. Bees can do it, so feed them out in smaller amounts and build up to larger amounts. These lambs now have plenty. On to the next ones. For those of you worried, slugs here. Let's talk about grain poisoning while I'm here. Grain poisoning is something you can get from with stock if you feed them something that you know, causes it in too high volumes without their gut getting used to it. Wheat is a very dangerous one for this. Um, if sheep eat a lot of wheat without having their gut used to wheat, they will literally eat it and then die. I'll put a reference for you guys to read in the comments if you were interested in learning more. I need to eyeball moisten. I literally did the wrong eye at the first. Last week, I accidentally got myself in the eye with oil from an egg, so there is no permanent damage. It's just I need to keep my eye moistened because my eye is going dry. And for it to heal, it needs to take a lesson out of Slug's book and stay nice and moist. Here's what corn looks like when it's whole. Um, you guys are fucking Americans. You know what corn looks like. The grain is out. The sheep. Here have been fed. Now we need to go refill and go out to the next paddock. Just wanted to show you this very effective gate latch. Um, as you can tell, it clearly has a hole to go into and it works It works very well. I'm just on my way with, my, with the second load of grain. Looks like Liam's out here cleaning the headers. We just finished harvesting yesterday, so we're done. Prime lines on the rake. This is how that's looking. We'll drop this grain off and be on our way to the next place. Some of you wanted to see some other people on the farm talk. So I'm going to see if Liam will give a quick explanation while he cleans out the harvester and show you what that looks like. I just don't know how busy I'm going to be today because there's not really a lot to do at the moment. Normally this time of year, I'd be feeding sheep nonstop. But because we've got, you know, wheat crops regrowing i don't need to so there's not really a hell of a lot for me to do so what we're doing here is we've got the two headers back out of the paddocks now we just finished harvesting yesterday the big 2388 and the 2144 already blown that one out but all we've got to do is go take all the shields off all the side panels and everything what we're trying to do is we're trying to get all of this stuff crap out of here. Settled itself in there because we've had some rain, so that'd be a bit fun, but got to get all of that out. It's a very fun, very dusty job. Then once we've done this with the big blower, then we take it up to the workshop and we get it as clean as we can. Just the air compressor hose. It does a bit better job of being a bit more accurate. As you can see, there's just stuff everywhere. Like that's pretty typical. You get that in a day. Like we do blow off every day, but at the end of the season, yeah, you just gotta be a bit more thorough with it. Now we're playing the game, find the fucking wheat pile. Um, apparently there's a wheat pile out here I need to pick up and then spread the rest out or the sheep will eat it and die, as they do. I was told it was near the road gate. I don't see a fucking pile of wheat anywhere in from the road gate it's just in from the road gate typo just in 
great. Ah, I have found the pile. I would not describe this as just in from the road gate, but sure. Just one of the many really fun jobs. While I'm here, I'm sure there's a question I could answer. Okay, so someone commented about me saying about how, um, how we pay $10 a sheep to shear a sheep. Then they said that the, they thought the shearers would make $200 an hour. No, there's a lot more people in a wool shed than just the shearers. When you're paying for your sheep to be done, paying for your shearer, which gets roughly $4.40 a sheep, then you pay, you gotta pay your rouse, which is the person who cleans up for the shearer, um, skirts the wool. Then in a normal shed, you'd also pay a classer. We don't because dad does it. So we don't, we don't pay for a classer. They get an allowance, they get a $35 travel allowance. They also get a paper allowance, which, you know, most shearers make a couple grand a week. Like they can afford a $5 paper allowance, but that ain't none of my business. Uh, what else? Oh, also, if you're shearing with a contract company like we do, um, you know, the guy who owns it needs to take a cut. But yeah, the shearers do not make the $10. It's, there's a lot of other people that get a cut. And that's why, that's why it costs $10 a sheep. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I'm going to have to come back with a shovel for that one. Um, that one probably as well. Because it's sprouted, it's stuck to the ground. Makes it very hard to fucking pick it up. We're back with a shovel. See if we can get it off now. I just had the biggest fucking scare of my life. I'm still out here, it's almost been fucking an hour. Still cleaning. And then the biggest crack of thunder came out of nowhere. Typo scared. She doesn't like thunder. But my fucking God, that was loud. I'll see if I can catch another one. Oh, I just felt rain. There's the wheat. I'm hoping the rain will destroy it. That's very convenient for me. Um, here's the other bit of the wheat. I've just been kicking and shoveling wheat for the last hour. Oh. Sorry, slug, the window doesn't work anymore. Well, I'm not about to stand outside in the rain and shovel, so back we go, I guess. So next on the list are these ewes. We're bringing them in. This is the last mob with lambs. Half of these are definitely not our sheep. They are the neighbors. Typo. <whistles> They're everywhere, I know. Very hard for you, my slug. They don't want to run because the truck's there. Because we like to leave vehicles in the fucking way. <whistles> Type up here. <whistles> Come on, bitch. <whistles> Come on, pew, pew, pew. Type out there. Stay there. Stay there. All right, Typo, go left. Good, good. They're in there. Go have some lunch. Oh, let's go get the car because it's idling. I'll go get the car, then we go have some lunch. While I've got the chance, Typo, I'm going to run some more bales out to the fat lambs. Um, they need a bale in their paddock for a bit of, oh, hello, a bit of roughage. Just put the bales in the rape lamb paddocks. One there and then one here. I've just got the beans left to go. Last bales out now. I'm just on my way back. Start sorting out those ewes and lambs. Slug's still here. I'm 
I'm hoping it's going to work the way I want it to. Can I take off, please? It's always hidden here. It's in the hay at the moment. It's hard to see. All right. He's off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it to follow me until we get into the yards. I think that's the best option personally. I'm just setting the yards up now to feed the sheep through. doing is we are marking these lambs and then they're going back with their mums and we're drenching the mums and then they're going back to their paddock because they're young they were accident lambs as you might be able to tell they look shit um so as i was trying to show before see this e tag here see how it's just got this australian symbol whereas the v e tags have the symbol as well as the v and what the v is is shows that they're back being vaccinated with the OJD vaccine. The lambs that we're keeping, they get the V ear tag, and then the fat lambs slash, I saw standing there, she calls, them, she calls them terminal lambs, we call them fat lambs. The fat lambs don't get that ear tag because they don't live long enough to get OJD, pretty much. There's a couple that have been fly blown, he's on his way now to go and get the, um, the shearing piece so they can be treated. But while I'm here, I'll show you how we mark a lamb. First, these are called a lacerators. You use these for the nuts as well as the tails. You push, pop the nuts in there. So what you do is you kind of just push them out like so. You only have one, no, it is there. There we go. There's two in there. I don't know if you can see, but there they are. Then you put that on. When you do this, you've got to be careful not to put it too low because you can get um, you can get their intestines and then they die. So top tip of being a livestock farmer, don't kill your stock. These lambs aren't eight weeks old yet. Um, we've, there we go. That's why we can't um, wean them off their mum. Do you see that and the nut go in there? As for the tails, the boys you do a bit shorter, the girls you do a bit longer. Um, roughly where, just below where the V is, where the, the skin meets a V, that's where you put it on the boys. The girls you do it so it covers their vulva. This is a little ewe lamb. Are you a prime lamb? No, you're not a prime lamb, you're just a fat lamb. So she's fat, she's a fat lamb. So you just put, pop the ring on. Whoops. You just pop the ring on over the tail or around the tail, I suppose. Pop it up to here. See how she's got a vulva here? See? Turns out I stopped the recording, but I just wanted to show you the friends. <laughs> Guys, you, you don't need to sit in that corner. You are allowed to uh, to, uh, move the lambs. You don't have to sit there. These are the ones that aren't ours. Put them back outside. We can add them to the rams and they can be all picked up in one go. Doo -doo -doo. Good boy, Hank, you're doing well. Go right. Good, very good. Just flicking all the lambs so they don't get fly blown because of their tails. Bring the ewes in now, because get them out of the way. And then we can do the lambs. That's an Australian white, by the way. She's not just extremely lysy. This is the drench we're using along with this drench. No, nope. this drench here and the minerals as usual. I get 10 mil of the minerals each and we're going to Dose to 75 kilo, 7.5 mil. When you're working with really low amounts, normally we just pull 
end. But when you're working with like, you know, 300 mil, you pour them and pour them in. And then you don't stop just bringing these ewes back out now and they will be heading back to their paddock. Yep, here they come. Go, guinea fowl, go. Clipper. <laughs> come on. Yeah, I know. It's very confusing. There's a gate there now. Come on. Hopefully they're going the right way. Typo, back here. You're missing a sheep. Typo, come here. Let her back off so she goes. Oh, now Leo's in the way. We'll put those sheep back in their paddocks. Squeaky wheel. I don't know where the other three are. Bloody raining again. It stopped. Now it started. Oh, I shut the gate. I forgot. Straight up to being nuisances. Stop. No, no, no. Go left. I need to move a bit quicker there. I see there's one over here. I'll go get her too. Why are you limping? What's wrong with your feet? Ah, uh, your foot's been... See how her foot's been torn off a little bit? That'll be why she's limping. There's no other reason. When you're looking for injuries, you just kind of feel up the leg. Feel up into the hip. You're feeling for heat. If you find heat in legs, like a really hot spot, you're expecting, you, you'll expect like an injury. See how she's a bit nervous. But see how that poof's peeling, it's starting to come off. Um, see if I can get it off. Hang on. Poof that hasn't shed properly. Now I've opened it up enough now that this will come off within the next few days and then it should be right. All right, come on, bub. Up you hop. Step away, let her get up. There, she's already a little looking a little bit better. See that back foot? It's that hoof that she doesn't quite like walking on. Before you say, I know you're going to say in the comments, well, why didn't you just get the trimmers and trim, trim her hoof? When they're hard like they are here in summer, you cannot cut through them. They are that, like their hooves get that hard. You, you just, it, do, it doesn't snip. You can use a Dremel. I don't have any experience with that if anyone you know, has, have used a Dremel on sheep, how, preferably not pet sheep, how did they behave? Were they fine or did they kick and squeal and everything? Liam's being a good boy, blowing the header out. He's in there somewhere. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like or typo will put a ring on your tail. And if you don't have a tail, boys, you know what I'm talking about. We're trying to beat this rain here up.